Well, it's that time of year again. The time where we all huddle close to that special someone, gaze lovingly into their eyes, and truly appreciate them and everything that they mean to you. Well, at least that's how I heard it goes. I tend to spend my Valentine's Day reading comics and watching Friends. I mean, could I be any more single? The last Marvel movie to hit screen in a continuous stream of great superhero movies, oh, sorry, great Marvel movies, is the subject of this episode. That's right, hold on to your butts, because today we are talking about the Sorcerer Supreme, Mr. Stephen Strange. Doctor. This sorcerer uses powers taken in from other dimensions to manipulate his own abilities to fight against astral and ethereal things that threaten our well-being and existence. But how does he do this, and could it be possible for us to do this? Because, let's be honest, after watching that movie, which was awesome by the way, we all want to be able to manipulate space-time to our will. Well, unfortunately, there is no way as to how we could possibly accomplish these feats, and neither should Doctor Strange. Let me explain. Most of Doctor Strange's spells, at least from the movie, involve solid light projections that can be manipulated to the will of the user. Now, light cannot have a mass as we know, but it can be manipulated through its photons. This is most evident when light gets sucked into a black hole, where the extreme force of the black hole gives off enough gravitational pull to affect these massless particles of light. But even the awesome force that black holes produce is not enough. You see, this force has enough energy to manipulate particles of light, which is still a baffling concept, but nothing compared to the magic that sorcerers produce. In order for the light projections that the sorcerers conjure up to be able to reflect attacks from physical damage to interact with each other, they must have at least some mass. This would only be possible if the photons were condensed by a factor of infinity, and while a black hole may be really powerful, it doesn't come near the power of infinity. In fact, nothing does. If a force that had the ability to channel photons by giving off a gravitational pull with a force of infinity were to occur, the entire universe would instantly collapse into it, thereby creating the densest singularity that has ever or will ever exist. That's right, Doctor Strange, by casting his little magic noodles, has caused more harm than ever seen before. Now, most superheroes, as we've explained, produce too much energy for this Earth and will create a black hole, which will most likely have the power to destroy an entire solar system. But this trumps that by, well, a factor of... infinity. Complete destruction of the entire universe occurring instantaneously. Even the little jumpy boots, which, by the way, is the lamest artifact ever, would cause this sort of harm to the universe as they create that small little light projection that Mordo plays hopscotch on. But enough of that. Let's see what other harm this guy does to us. Let's talk about the portals that Doctor Strange makes. What exactly are those? A bridge in space-time, it seems. Like somehow enough energy was created so that we can tear through the... Oh no. Well, it looks like another black hole is formed. How original. You see, these portals must be wormholes, which is a bridge between two places in the fabric of space-time. How do you create this bridge, you ask? You simply need to tear through the fabric of reality. And what is the only known thing strong enough to tear through the fabric of reality? A black hole. While things may seem kind of dark, get it? <laughs> At this point, but there still may be some hope for the Sorcerer Supreme to avoid taking a bust away. Black holes come in different sizes, so let's just assume which we can do because the science is sketchy, that because of the relatively low distance that Doctor Strange travels, relatively being the operative word, that only the smallest possible black hole is needed, so while massive destruction is not too far off, it is not as bad as a solar-sized one. In order to achieve the minimum requirements to create a black hole, you would need to create enough energy for one to form. If we take aside the magic aspect of Doctor Strange and focus simply on what the sling ring needs in order to form wormholes, they would have to be very dense in order for the energy created by moving them in a circle to be enough to create a black hole. Let's see if there's anything dense enough to assist the Doctor in his trans-reality travels. Let's look at Quark Gluon Plasma, the densest item known to man. One cubic centimeter weighs over 40 billion tons. To put that into comparison, the densest element is osmium and has a density of 23 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, obviously Doctor Strange can't even lift this ring if it is made out of Quark Gluon Plasma, but let's just assume that he can. The human hand can actually move at speeds of 150 miles per hour, about as fast as the top speed of a Corvette. 
This speed, combined with the immense weight of the plasma, would lead to create a whopping 214.94 megatons of TNT in terms of energy, which is more than four times the power of the strongest nuclear warhead ever made. But, unfortunately for Doctor Strange, this is nowhere near enough energy to create a black hole. So it looks like he's going to have to get a subway token because his warp gates just aren't possible. But if you think about it, if he can produce so much energy through his sling rings, he could kill anyone in just one punch. Man. So remember, whether he's crushing the universe as we know it, or giving a fist bump with the power to rival the sun, Benedict Cumberbatch will never live this down. That's it for this episode. Remember to leave a like and comment on what hero you would like to see perform in the real world next. We're the Superhero Scientists, signing off.